So if you're following, you start following this uh, video from now, in the first part, uh, we we talked about uh, what we had an introduction of what uh, 14 island, uh, Islands is and how do you deliver to your customers? How do you do the strategy? Basically, we do these videos so that we can deliver best, best practices that you guys are doing uh, in in uh, like developing websites and you know all the design and, and development that you de deliver. We think you you are doing like quality uh, work and we think like people, our users. Uh, can uh, profit from that uh, uh, experience and best practices to improve their own quality of the, the, the quality of their own projects. And now we wanted to talk in this video about um, development tools and how do you choose a framework for your clients. So how, how does it go? Like imagine like we did the first phase, we did the strategy, we did the design, and now there's technology, right? Uh, mm. Which framework do you use? Yes. Um, so actually, we usually start to think about it quite early on in the process. Um, and we will also, I mean, we'll always ask the clients what they, if they have any preferences, because in some cases they already ha like have some stack in place that they want to continue to work with, or they have some something in mind already. So, but if they, if they don't, then we have kind of, kind of our own kind of set of technologies that we will propose mm. and I would say in most cases uh, it would be like these days it would be react um, we find react to be a very good kind of um, framework or a framework library to <laughs> yeah people are so sensitive <laughs> yeah, exactly. to that be careful <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah exactly I should be careful <laughs> no, <but> yeah <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> that's, so um, it's, a, it's a good library for, for yeah, yeah it's, it's good for like to structure your kind of uh, code in a good way, you know, right? And it w w if you have a team working together, it's a very like structured way to work with your code, and it's also quite performant. So, so let's dig more into that. Yeah, yeah, you said it's a structured way to work in a team. Why? Yeah, because th there are kind of predefined rules about how you use React. I mean, of course, there is flexibility also, mm -hmm. but at le like you, you will be building components. There are like these sets of best practices that you will kind of so that, that are always al already agreed upon by the community right. that that kind of makes sense to use. Like, I mean, you will always component like you will build everything into like break everything into small components, small components. Uh, as as an example. So it's kind of. You, the code is going to be well structured, kind of. By if you cut by by following these kind the of the rules of what re how React should look like, so it's structured. Yeah. Okay, and um, and also that fits maybe the you talked about also delivering design a design system that fits with that as well. Yeah, that's also like design system is kind of components on the design side, but then in code you, you can match it with with yeah you can match it. And that's maybe one interesting thing to mention is that what we usually do is that we mostly work in Sketch in terms of design. Mm -hmm. And our designers try to kind of, when there is a reusable component, they use symbols in, in Sketch, which kind of translates really well yeah, into I components really like in, in kind of React. And it's a good reflex. It's a good workflow to build with in a team to say like, okay, designers that will as uh, when necessary, will they will lose uh, symbols, and then developers they know okay, this is a symbol. We can turn it into a component, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Do, would you think that there are other aspects uh, where components they help uh, the team work together? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I think in general, like it's just good to. I mean, one thing that we always recommend is to kind of have a library of components somewhere, so you can always you can you can always go somewhere and see what's already there. You know, it's like what sometimes happens, especially with bigger companies, that people are in different departments building the same things. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have that kind of visibility of of you know what components are already exist, and also for the designers that so they can maybe maybe they don't have to like do a whole redesign of, of right they, they take something that already yeah. almost done right so i think that's that's another benefit yeah and and also it makes a global coherence so that you don't have too many different um uh, differences in in a different pages maybe yeah. on the website mm -hmm. but i was i was wondering and i, I myself i have a you know, kind of the answer but do you think that components uh, are uh, suitable for websites because there are some some error with people saying like 
Yeah, maybe React is too much for 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 websites. Mm. Uh, you know, do you yeah. get, like are they useful for websites? <sighs> yeah, so I I I totally understand what you mean. I mean, it's kind of the web the web is so young, you know. So we used to just like write HTML, and I I kind of I mean personally I miss those days. You know, you could just like view source on a page, and you would understand everything. And yeah, it's uh it's easy. You can just start to hack something, and 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 kind of build a web page that 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 way. But now it's more like you're working in Java or something. Like everything is like classes or, or C sharp, yeah. or you know, it's yeah, more like yeah, object more, oriented yeah, kind of yeah. way of. So working. it's more complex than what it used to be uh, yeah. for web pages. I mean, we'll we'll still do vanilla vanilla JavaScript on on like simple sites. Mm. But if, if we know there's going to be a team that's going to take over it, then it kind of makes sense to to do it in a structured fashion, like in a, in a, in a, in a way that it kind of feels good structurally, you know. So if I imagine a web, a website, mm -hmm. web pages, for instance, mm -hmm. um, do you use components for like micro components, like buttons and stuff like that? Or do you go like also sections, they become components for you? Yeah, yeah that's how we usually do it. Sections? Both. I mean, Both. It's, uh, every okay. reusable unit kind of becomes a, a component. So, um, yeah, sections, which then become slices in, in Prismic, for example, when we yeah, use Prismic. We'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> okay. so you have also the counterpart, the, yeah. the, the similar uh, concept. So yeah. you have symbols in, 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 uh, in Sketch, components in React, and then slices in, in Prismic to represent the same component. Mm -hmm. That's what you say. Yep. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so you look at the page and you say, okay, we're bre we breaking it into these sections. Each one will be a component, mm -hmm. right? Something yep. like this? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, now, you talked about React, mm -hmm. okay? But I suppose for a lot of reasons, you don't use pair React, you use it with something else, right? Because SEO, because, you know, speed, all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you choose for that? Yeah, we, uh, like for the last project, we've been using Gatsby as, Gatsby. A, as a framework. Are you here happy about it? Yeah, we're really happy about it, actually. How, how did you get to, to, to choose Gatsby? What was the problem? How did you, how did that process end up like with, with choosing Gatsby? What, what mm -hmm. questions did you have to answer? Yeah, I, I think it's like there are these common problems between protests that you all like the same problems that you always have to solve, you know, routing is, for example, one of them. But another is like, when using APIs, is that so Gatsby has a really strong like plugin system, basically. Mm. So has a long, yeah. a big, you know, kind of uh, community of people building plugins, and that's, for example, something you don't want to be doing yourself all the time. You want to use. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a huge value there. It's also just a huge value in just being fast to kind of set set up the the project. Um, so let me take one at a time because yeah? you, you talked uh, quickly about several things and I want okay. to have more details about that. <laughs> All right. So the first thing mm. you told about routing, how do you mm -hmm. solve that with Gatsby if people don't know, if they, they're not uh, familiar I mean, with Gatsby. It kind of comes, uh, comes out of the box. Mm. If you're using like server-side rendering uh, of, of uh, pages kind of, but in some cases we might uh, be doing like a single page apps. Mm -hmm. And then in some cases we will all always have also have like client side routing. Mm -hmm. Which will just like, use a, uh, I think it's called React Router. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Routing. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, but basically in Gatsby, what, how, how do you define routing? Like it's, um, um, so, be, so because Gatsby builds it statically, right? The website. Yeah, they, they kind of have two ways to do it. You can do it um, kind of just statically. So that then you have a like let's say you have an about page. You put it, I think there's a folder called pages. You put it on there, and that's going to be like just like your page slash about. I, I like that. It's simple, right? Yeah, it's like really you don't simple. Do anything. You just it's the yeah. about page is in the folder, and it's there. Yeah, it's like it has been thought through it for you, which is mm -hmm. kind of nice. Right. But they also have another folder which is for like more dynamic pages, mm -hmm. and then you can put in pages like if you have uh, what could I take? You know. Um, for like Prismic as an example, if you have like documentation, you have multiple documents, mm -hmm. but they're the all same. using the same kind of thing. Yeah, like maybe blog posts. They, they yeah. Use, yeah. So so a blog, no, blog post slash uh, the name of the blog post. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That will go yes. into dynamic place. Exactly. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Um, and you talked also about another thing about mm-hmm. Gatsby. You said plugins. Like, can mm-hmm. you give us examples of plugins that you 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 were happy that okay they already exist. You don't have to invent them. You don't have to to do them. No, I was actually super happy about the Prismic plugin. So <laughs> <laughs> because it fetches that. Yeah, it, fa- it, it does everything for you, and it takes care of the um, kind of the live previews, as an example. Yeah, but, and cool. it does yeah. it really like, and it's, it's using GraphQL, and that's something that uh, Gatsby community kind of um, recommends that you use GraphQL. GraphQL. And I like that choice. Yeah. it's a bold choice. They it is there. a bold choice. But mm. I like it because also it's and somehow it corresponds to the component model, right? Mm-hmm. Because you know a, a, a sub query, sub GraphQL query becomes a component, so that is dispatched to that to that component. So it's it makes sense also for a component base. So it was it's a bold choice, but I guess they did the right choice mm-hmm. there. They, and but they facilitated a lot that mm. that uh, use of graph uh, graph Q, uh, GraphQL, yeah. So. Yep. Uh, they had even uh, they have plugins that will transform any API into Graph uh, QL, what, which was really nice. Mm, exactly, and uh, yeah, I Another think plugin? like on the yeah. Na- yeah, I just want to make <laughs> one more point about GraphQL because I think it's just um, it's very kind of a positive development for for front end developers mm. GraphQL because it puts kind of the control in their hands. You know, they can have more flexibility to query the API compared to, you know, the REST API. Then it's the, the kind of, the back, it's more the, pre- the, the kind of responsibility is more on the back end, you know, kind of, and this kind of gives us the... Right, right, right. The power, more power kind of. Mm-hmm. And I like that they have also like a, a, a huge set of other plugins where you can, you know, add things to your website, uh, you know, very easily. Like for image optimization, they got a plugin, and for other things, yeah. they got also plugins. It's a, uh, it's a huge community, and there's a kind of plugin for every, every everything. But of course, in uh, like in some cases, you actually have to build it yourself. Like, if maybe the plugin it doesn't always like fit. Yeah, if you have like specific needs, then. And uh, yeah, and you know the mm. this, the the interesting thing is that you mentioned a lot of uh, good advantages of Gatsby. Mm. But you didn't mention the one that I, they always talk about is speed, mm. which is uh, I mean they, because it's built uh, statically, so the website becomes really, 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 uh, really fast. Yeah. But that's nice, which mm. means like you are interested all like, with the product of the productivity of Gatsby, which is something else. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's not only speed; it's also the productivity that Gatsby brings you, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's of course. Yeah, it's one factor, and yeah, and it's a really important factor for me. It's more like. Um, in my mind, that's more kind of the. Uh, it's maybe more about the, like the how you host it, you know. Yeah. Um, Why? Uh, the the files. Yeah. Because yeah, I th- I mean that's one like big change in the way we build sites is like using more of the static kind of approach mm-hmm. for performance reason mm-hmm. basically. Yeah. And I think Netlify, for example, has done a huge a lot to kind of help with that, I think. I, I love what Netlify are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like they, like right now, they are the only, like, for, like as long as, I, as far as I know, they are like the main player in that kind of market. They almost like, feels like they own the space right right now. And they are doing um, some really good things. And They have a different approach. Yeah. I mean, they're, you know, in the hosting field, there are so many platforms, but they have their own way of doing that, you know, the, the, mm. the, uh, proposing their services because they have this kind of, they take your website that is static and then they add services around it so that you can augment, augment yeah. your website in a way or another, right? Exactly. It's, like a, it's very like an opinionated approach and it kind of, it's very, yeah, it's very m- much in, in line with how we like to work. And for example, like we've always liked to try to keep the client as thin as possible, you know, and and have the, all the business logic and everything hosted on the back end. And, and now, I mean, when we have to talk to some API or something, we usually use the Lambda functions mm. as an example. Like yeah. at Netlify. And, and it's so like, it's like, it doesn't put you in this situation where you have to like be thinking too much about backend, like server side and client side when you're doing, you know, building like a, a user experience and you can just focus on that. And then when you need like small pieces to talk to APIs and stuff, then. So your website is static, but if you need a service, something mm-hmm. that needs to have a server, then in that, only that service, you will deploy it on a Lambda 
uh, function and that's that's it it's not a big choice it's, it's not a big decision in your project right no then it's yeah it's a very like easy decision and I mean, the Lambda functions are kind of just like isolated kind of node modules. Mm. So even if we would decide later to to do some to take a more like server side approach, it would be a very like easy conversion. Like yeah, that's the guy. Kind of so mm. yeah, because the decision before it was like, yeah, I need some server because you know I need to build more services, and you had to take all these things into account yeah. in, in, in a decision where mm. you're designing things up front and you're trying to see in the future, whereas here it becomes like more, oh, let's let's see how it goes. If we need more services, well, we, we add more lambdas mm -hmm. and it will work that way, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Are there any other things that you like about, uh, you know, uh, or that process of using Gatsby and Netlify? Any other things? <laughs> Um, would mention uh, yeah probably <laughs> but maybe like uh, good to also mention that sometimes we do not like we do decide not to use those technologies like mm -hmm. for example when we are doing a very very creative projects like when we are using webgl or when we're mm -hmm. doing more like those kind of gaming experiences or like more interactive experiences mm -hmm. then it might not always be the best fit for the job because right. for example working with webgl is is kind of better done just like with vanilla javascript yeah, and, and that's, mm. that's maybe where also your experience comes into place because that's the role also that you're playing for your client. Like, mm -hmm. hey, we have some experience and we can give you advice on which is the best technology that you use for, for a, a certain uh, project. And you mm. have this conversation with them where you recommend technology as well. It's part of what you do, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. And you can even mix the, mix the two together. So Yeah, uh, for uh, parts you yeah. do some and for other parts you do the others. Yeah. And... Um, I was also but uh, wondering about another aspect is, but maybe I will we'll take it. It's more like how you hand the project back to your clients, but that I will, okay. I will maybe we can touch on it in a, in a different video. Okay. And how it like CSS and, and styles and all of that. Yeah, we, yeah, I think we pick post CSS now most of the time because mm -hmm. it's like future CSS mm -hmm. and it feels like the, uh, the sensible way to do it. Like when those kind of standards are public, then we like we don't need any library yeah right um, I, I understand yeah so so do I should I maybe explain how it works a bit more well, uh, go ahead yeah of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so I mean we've we've used SAS and we've used less and we've used I, I don't know a lot of these things and uh, it's it's very I think important to have a preprocessor for CSS yeah, because no, CSS is, is a limit. You want to modularize your code and, and like and use all these like nice things like variables and stuff. Variables like that. are really yeah. interesting. Uh, yeah. And those things will come in CSS mm -hmm. by time, and some are already there. So, but in the meantime, we can use those features that will be part of the CSS standard in the future, mm -hmm. but just within our preprocessor. Right. So maybe someday, some bright day in the future, you can. Yeah, it, it will be <laughs> like, native. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm. Cool. Well, mm. maybe like uh, we will move to other uh, uh, videos where we talk. We can, you know, dig deeper into other of the topics yeah. that we talked about. Mm -hmm. well, Sounds good. Cool.